Hey guys, what's up, Aru? For some reason, Hoyo really loves making tales and prophecies these days. I really don't like where this is going. But that's not why you're here, aren't you? We're here today to burn, uh, I mean, talk about witches. We have found the witch, may we burn, huh? Burn! Burn! This video is going to include a breakdown of the Hex and Zirkle, followed by a segment for the members within the trailer, what we know so far, as well as some minor speculations for each member. And finally, a take on the missing members and who they might be. Each segment will have a mix of actual lore and theory, so hopefully you guys have your lore caps on. Timestamps will be in the description and the comments. Let's get started. Hex and Zirkle is a secret organization of witches created by witches for the sole purpose of exploring Erminsel. Along with some incognito tea parties, it's possible that they also explore other areas of Tevat as well, especially outside of Tevat. One such example is the stars or space tied to cosmology and fate, an area of the game that in my opinion is a separate aspect of Tevat itself. Whether or not Erminsel can predict change or control fate is a separate topic, but the Hex and Zirkle's fates specifically isn't, and it doesn't help that we were presented with an octagram right off the bat. The only thing I can think of in regards to the Hex and Zirkle and Fate is that they aren't tied to it, with members of the Circle being possible outlanders, one of them having Mona's hydromancy raised to the power of 100, and someone who studies the literal direction and order of the world. That's just three of the members I'm vaguely describing. Thorns and branches I can only relate to the Gnostic Chorus and how it represents corrupting the first heir. Corruption and deception within Genshin, especially after we met the sinner, possibly relates to the Abyss. Which surprise surprise, we have at least one member who incidentally dabbled in such corruption. But we also get to see white branches. These white branches I'd like to think of as roots, which is ideally what their group is all about exploring Erminsel. Finally, a weird spiral presentation of the branches akin to the spiral abyss, which could imply that the Hexen Circle can go to the abyss and explore from there. In all honesty, I wouldn't be surprised if they could, considering that their group can challenge an Archon. Sadly, because of that, we can't determine how powerful each individual member could be. Not just raw strength, but also mental will and knowledge. In the words of Mona, when compared to the lofty truth, martial prowess is such a pathetically small concept. Now, you can think of the Hex and Circle as something like the Harbingers, since each member has their own interest, therefore a different end goal. But Erminsel Exploration is at least probably something they can all agree to, with Hex and Circle possibly having a more neutral good or maybe even a true neutral moral alignment, introducing a faction that sides with neither Celestia slash Tavad nor the Abyss, but at the same time interacting with both sides. To my knowledge, we never really got a proper introduction to who the Hex and Zirkle side with, just that they were a circle of witches that did Erminsol explorations. Right now, we have only 6 out of the likely 8 members of Hex and Zirkle, the former being revealed in the Mage's Tea Party, with each member pursuing a different direction or strategy to uncover the truths of the world, while of course exploring Erminsol. Based on that, we can only speculate on what each member's real motive is. Starting with my favorite, Rhine Daughter, also known as Gold, represented by a gold flowery eight-sided cup with dragon handles and alchemy motifs. An exceptional researcher from Conria, whose great mastery of Chemia, a type of alchemy from Conria, focused on creating life, allowed her to create wonderful creatures and masterpieces. Creations like the Abyss Wolves, Durin the Fallen but Still Beating Dragon, and the Walking Alchemy Table, Albedo. Each creation has a category or a title. Of course, not to mention unleashing more Abyss creatures and basically, allegedly, being the reason for the Cataclysm. Something about Rindo Tear that we have little information on is the Heart of Nabarius, an artifact that both Rindo Tear and Albedo found in a dungeon, most likely while they're conducting urban cell explorations. Shortly after discovering this artifact, Rindo Tear just disappears with the Heart of Nabarius, leaving Albedo with the title Cried Prince and the manuscript of the Magnum Opus for Albedo to finish. We still don't know about her whereabouts as well as what she is. Rhine Daughter's projects include the Primordial Human project, which resulted in her final creation and masterpiece, Albedo. Currently, there is a lot of speculation between these two characters. From Albedo reaching Rubido, unleashing another cataclysm, or Albedo becoming a successor to Rhine Daughter. 
recent theories lead to the heart of Noberius being the sinner and that Rhine Daughter disappeared after discovering it, and Albedo being a stepping stone in the creation of the real primordial human using the heart of Noberius, as well as a bit of Norse mythology about the Rhine River and protectors of the Rhine gold. Some of these theories have already been discussed by a lot of Genshin theorists already, so yeah, just go watch them. Lastly, even though it was Albedo's final assignment, both him and the members of Hexen Circle, we can assume have the same motive, that is, to find the truths and meanings of Tevat. Barbelo or Barbeloth, codenamed B, more commonly known as the Old Hag, represented by a bluish teacup with stars and vine motifs, a master of hydromancy and by extension, divination, the teacher of Mona Majestis the Astrologist, whom she calls Meg for short. She has a habit of picking out hats, as well as a friendly rivalry with Klee's mom, Alice. Both Barbelo and Mona are also in search of the truths of the world, but do so through astrology and through scrying the stars. Compared to Albedo, and Rhine Daughter, who does so through Chemia. But both and all parties have one thing in common, Ermensel Exploration, serving as the catalyst for their abilities to search for truths. Hydromancy is the art of inferring fate from the illusory reflection of the stars on the water's surface, using reflections of the heavens on the water to reveal truths within the world. This includes various things like constellations which represents a person's traits and what's in store for them. This method of looking for truths through water reflections is a key characteristic in Barbelo's research. And dare I say, it's what defines her research completely. An interesting tidbit about Barbaloth is that she has a diary of her so-called dark youth. This was a diary that she gave to Alice to keep for 50 years, which later ended up with Klee and then given to Mona in her character quest. The contents were said to be ridiculous and that there was nothing of note, but maybe at some point we'll find out about what the diary has in store. In regards to the theory, her name is possibly related to Barbalo, which is a name in Gnosticism with quite a lot of iterations. One is of Enoya, or Sophia, which is called the Spark of Wisdom, while others speak of Barbalo as a never-aging god in human form. But whichever theory you would like to follow will be up to you. I won't be going into detail since we're only using surface-level inferences anyway. Now let's talk about the biggest troll in the game, Alice. Represented by a pink flower teacup with witch motifs, as well as being the only member with a chair and quite a lot of teacups and desserts. Lastly, this bird and these balloons in the background, which I have no idea what it means. The elder of the Hexen Circle whose talents knows no bounds, with knowledge of astrology, engineering, and many other mystical fields. She is so prominent that she only needs a phonograph to represent her, traveling and adventuring so much and so far that she created the ultimate travel guide for Tavan. Now, this book is honestly more of a diary than a travel guide and is the best way to know about Alice and her travels. Like seriously, if you open it, right now, the first chapter is about using hilly churls as fuel. The information we have about her comes from the most obscure places in the most random ways. Alice's abilities don't focus on any specific field like other members either, but she's really good at a lot of things. Firstly, she's a near omnipotent sorceress whose power is that of Ventis in creating the events at Golden Apple Archipelago. Secondly, she knows about certain techniques like wards to save off Tatarogami, which is known only to the Shogun. As for people she knows, let's just say that she has a lot of connections. Lastly, there's also the possibility of her traveling between worlds from a KFC Twitch event, along with what she says about Aloy in her miscellany trailer. Regarding her age, she's an old friend of Rhine Daughter. Bear in mind, the cataclysm was 500 years ago, meaning that they met even before that. After all I've said, you might think that Alice is up to something really suspicious, and I think so too. But Alice doesn't do all of this for some end goal or life project. She does it because she simply wants to, and as a person who won't lie, she has a soft spot for people who are genuine and treats them like her family. Her adventuring led her to so many places in and most likely out of Tevat that there is virtually no place with an item, event, or person that doesn't at least vaguely mention Alice. For theories, there is a plethora on Alice alone, so I won't even bother picking a specific one for you guys. But feel free to jump into the rabbit hole that is Alice's wonderland of theories. Now what do you do when the world can change books on a whim? That's right, you make more books. 
Ender's daughter, or M, represented by her fairy tale book, is a human mage who focused on revealing and saving the truths of the world through her stories. As mentioned, she is a human, so her lifespan is of course shorter than that of Alice and Rhine daughter. Hopefully, she is still alive because Alice only ever mentioned one member that passed on. Her alias, M, is left to theory and speculation since we don't know what M means. Now, apart from being the legend that never ends, Anders' daughter is a renowned writer and author of the book The Boar Princess. Current speculations point that she is also the author of another book, The Pale Princess and the Six Pygmies, because both books have the same single rose on the cover. She may have written other books with rose motifs, but that's a bit of a stretch. The books I've mentioned so far, as well as a lot of the fairy tales that we know about, have one thing in common, allegories. Anders' daughter might have mastered the art of allegorical writing and could be her way of pursuing the truths of the world. Different from the previous four members who utilize some form of magic or ability, Anders daughter is different in that she writes the truths that she finds through her stories and she possibly could have written quite a bit already. Regarding allegorical books, there are already theories depending on which allegorical book you would want to know about. But Anders' daughter herself and what book she may have written is equally as mysterious as an allegorical book itself. Nicole, or N, is... let's just get this over with. The assumed mysterious voice in 3.3. She wasn't represented in the tea party but was mentioned within the event quest. Even though Nicole has virtually no lore or info to be connected with, her ability as a prophetess that studies world direction and order is something akin to how the urban soul itself functions. Storing information and keeping records of events, characters, and possibly even knowledge that's been taken away. If the urban soul can have its records changed and alter the entirety of either Tevet's history or people's memory, as well as physical text having been changed, Nicole most likely knows of that happening and can remember the original events that led to it before changing, meaning that she can remember things that were removed by erosion or changes in history. As someone who studies world order and direction, this is where I think her search for the truths of the world lie. However, we don't know how she does this or what sort of world order and direction she studies. As well as if this study of world order and direction only applies to one world, that is, to Vat. But since she isn't affected by Ermensil's changes, meaning she can remember things from history, we can also assume that she isn't from Tevat, or at least found a way to remove herself from the Ermensil's records without erasing herself. I mean, she said it herself. Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance, but for anyone else, who can say? Something that Nicole can do that the Ermincel can't do is the possibility of storing forbidden knowledge. Assuming that Nicole is an outlander or isn't tied to Tabat's laws, she can basically take in as much forbidden knowledge and, by extension, knowledge from the Abyss. And she might also be quite familiar with the Sinner and the Loom of Fate as well because of her field of study. Recent theories about the mysterious voice led to either Easteroth or, well, the God of Time. Now that she's been revealed to be a member of Hexen Circle, her being Easteroth is less likely. However, since we know little about Nicole herself, she could be a weakened version of Easteroth, similar to Goba and Nahida. But that's if you still believe that theory. I Ivanovna N, or J for short, is a member who we know the least about, represented by a round pink teacup with rose petals and stems with thorn motifs, as well as most likely being blonde. She was said to have gotten married and have left the Hexen Circle. The letter in Wind Bloom's breath was meant to be sent to her, before ending up in Scarlet's possession and then placing it in the Boar Princess book, later being found by Kali and by extension the Traveler. Ivanovna's name and her successor Scarlet's clothing suggest that she could have hailed from Sneznaya. The letter slash prophecy ending up in Mondstadt was either left there by Scarlet for us to find or was left in Ander's daughter's book by Ivanovna herself after their recent tea party in Joy Above the Clouds. What's interesting about Ivanovna herself is that she never had a successor. Having successors from what I can understand is for the elder to decide or Ivanovna just died before being able to choose one. But from the line of successors and apprentices that Ivanovna could have had, only Scarlet showed real promise. And to Alice of all people, which seems to imply that Alice's interest as the Elder is really hard to peak. 
Alice mentioned that she would be speaking with Scarlett at a later date about Ivanovna's married life and possibly becoming the official successor of Ivanovna. Her field of study in regards to finding the truths of the world as well as exploring Ermansol wasn't revealed either. Everyone else seems to show at least their abilities when exploring, but Ivanovna didn't have one, and she's the only member who specifically mentioned to have passed away. So the only way we can find out about her is through other characters and items related to her. We have about 6 members in total, with 5 of them having mentioned their own specialized fields in exploring Erminsol. But we still have 2 unknown members. And this is where we're gonna start to theorize on who they might be. Mona is one possible member, but as the apprentice of Barbalo, who is already an active member, this is less likely. And Ivanov's apprentices were never members either, unless Mona is a special case and became a member all the while still being under the old hag's care. Next is Lisa, who herself says isn't a member of Hexen Circle but is aware of their existence. It's likely that she knows the other members personally as well. No evidence however. Next is Senora who denies being a witch and already died. But honestly I'm thinking that she is Ivanovna. This is just a crack theory so don't mind it. Another possible member is Skirk who is a person of the Abyss that trained child. This has even less info to be backed up but considering the Hexen Circle could travel between realms based on the Mage's Tea Party it's possible and Skirk could present a pretty interesting interesting specialization for the Hexen Zirkle, that is, using the Abyss. Honestly, I have no clue who the other two members could be, but the other two should either be an outlander, extremely knowledgeable, or at least isn't tied to fate. Since all the other members have their own specific way of exploring urban souls, the other two should have a very unique way of finding the truths as well. And considering we still have three more regions along with an eighth region, and not to mention Celestia, we basically have a long time to find out about each members and who they truly are. And there you go, Hexen Zirkle and all the members in a video with a bit of theory mixed in. So let me know in the comments, do you guys agree with Nicole being the nerfed Easteroth or is she someone else? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts on Hexen Zirkle. And if you did, do give this video a like, subscribe for more of my content, and hit the bell to stay updated on my videos and streams. I could only make this video more lore-centered for now, but expect a possible theory on each member as we find out more info about them later down the line. Right now, I'm thinking of going back for another round of the sinner since i haven't entirely finished my theory on who the sinner could be but that's for another time so i'll see you guys in the next video yeah like comment if you enjoy subscribe for my ramblings and stay mad theorists bye